Allen Iverson has been known to be one of the genuine players in the NBA. But people think he was a hating ass person because he had tattoos, earrings, braids. You know what I'm saying? He brought hip hop, essentially, black culture to the NBA. Usually players in his position usually hate on the older or the younger generation because they try to prop up their older generation in their era But Allen Iverson shows love to all the greats that come after him. He showed love to Steph He showed love to Chris Paul. He showed love to Steve Nash. He showed love to Dwayne Wade He showed love to James Harden a lot of these old heads hate these new guys because they play the game all wrong back in the 90s We would have back in the AI doesn't care bro if you can hoop he likes you. So when I seen Allen Iverson hate on another man, I knew it was justified. Now he didn't say in the interview from the podcast with Steven Jackson and Matt Barnes, but I'm beginning to think it's Jason Whitlock. Now if you don't know Jason Whitlock, this man is built like that SpongeBob character, that bully SpongeBob. <laughs> He's Uncle Ruckus from Boondocks. He's a Uncle Tom. And you know what Uncle Tom is, it's somebody, a black person, usually a black man, who hates on his own race. That's what Uncle Tom is. You're delusional, you're crazy, you're psychotic. That's what Uncle Tom is. Jason Whitlock, back in the day, said, I know many of you probably think the number of tattoos doesn't influence viewing habits. You're wrong. Like everything else televised, appearances matter. There's a reason you don't see new teens in movies with fat people. Trust me, fat people have that thing it just no one wants to see it not even fat people and he was referencing Allen Iverson's tattoo that nobody wants to see his tattoos nobody want to see him get his hair braided in the sideline with braids in his hair basically he's saying it's ghetto basically he's saying it's not professional if you are a coon super coon negro in training jump off nigga we is playing basketball at the end of the day most basketball players come from the inner city they hoop with that in their hair they hoop with chains on they hoop with tattoos on their chest on their arms. Why do they have to change themselves? The people who bring in the most money, the black basketball players have to change themselves for professionalism. At the end of the day, this is a kid's game. And Jason Willock has not just hated on Allen Iverson. He hated on Kobe for his death. You know what I'm saying? If you don't believe me, look it up. He hated on LeBron James. When they put that racist stuff on LeBron's house, he hated on him and said, oh, you're a rich billionaire. Why, did, why are you getting offended? Nigga, are you crazy? I see Jason Whitlock slander. I rejoice. I get happy. All skin folk ain't kin folk. If you know what that means, drop a like on the video. I rejoice. I don't like this man. He's the worst. Not TV analyst. Not sports takes. I don't care about his sports takes. I don't even hear his sports takes. And it's, it's the fact that he's a brother makes it all even worse. So when LeVar Ball said, the only thing you can comment on is snacks. He got banned from Fox Sports. What the hell? I rejoiced. Nobody likes him. And everybody on that show, Marcellus Wiley used to be a cool dude. He went to Fox Sports. I don't believe in white privilege. Uh, You're done. Y'all both brothers. And nobody likes y'all. And this is the problem with sports media today. They get so fixated on negative energy and chaos that they don't see the positive aspect of sports. For example, when Paul George and Kawhi Leonard choked, you know what I'm saying? They did choke, and the Clippers lost in six games. Or Nobody really congratulated the Nuggets. We was talking about how Kawhi Leonard and Paul George choked. Nobody said how Jokic played a great series, Jamal Murray played a great series, how they role players stepped up, played defense, Jeremy Grant played defense with Kawhi Leonard and Paul George, how they moved the ball. Nothing positive came out of that. It was just Paul George... You suck. Kawhi Leonard, you're not better than LeBron James. Skip Bayless, for 17 years of his life, has slandered LeBron James from 2003 to 2020. That's how he made his big bucks. That's how he's the most popular TV analyst besides Stephen A. Smith. He slandered a man. It's not because of his positive takes. I'm telling you this. Even Stephen A. Smith, he doesn't really slander a Pacific player, but the main thing that gets him the views and gets the clicks is him bashing a player, yelling. That's facts. Sports media is fixated on chaos than actually covering the sport that they love. Even though LeBron gets slander, I don't think a lot of it's warranted. Yes, criticism is great for sports, but slander is different. Actually hating on the player is different. From Giannis to KD to Curry to James Harden to Russell Westbrook, how many of these guys 
have you seen get hated on by the media? All of Luca is young, so he ain't gonna get hated on yet. Jason Tatum, John Morant. Once they get to the year four, year five in the league, yes, they gonna get hated on too. That's the problem. Look at Ben Simmons, his rookie year. Everybody was calling Ben Simmons next Magic Johnson, average 16, eight and eight, da da da. Soon, second season hit. Oh, he ain't got a jump shot. You coward, da da da. Third year, same thing. Fourth year, same thing. That's what at least basketball media is. But Jason Woodlock takes that to another level. Going at them at, as going at their parents, going at the history of the man. You're not supposed to do that, bro. Because if you saw any of these players in real life, you will be quiet as a mouse. You wouldn't say a word. That's my problem, Jason Willow. I want to thank y'all on 500 subscribers, boy. Y'all real for that, bro. Quest to 1,000 on the way. If you're new to this channel, make sure you drop a like and subscribe if you like this type of content. I do this. I try to do this a lot. I say every day, but you know damn well. It's hard to do every day, maybe every other day, maybe double uploads one time here and there. But because it forced the NBA to put rules in place to try to stop the next Allen Iverson from destroying their league. Uh, so David Stern institutes a dress code uh, in reaction to Allen Iverson bringing way too much of the hip hop thing to the NBA. One of the biggest lies ever told is that hip hop has somehow been good for the NBA. It hasn't been. It, it has nothing to do with the values that sports have always built themselves around. Music is rebellious, hip hop is rebellious, all rock and roll, it's all rebellious. Sports are patriotic. The NBA, everybody loves the NBA. I love the NBA. It could be doing better if it, didn't, if it stayed true to true sports values. It could make even more money. Allen Iverson, to me, confused a lot of these young NBA players into thinking, they were selling hip-hop records instead of selling basketball. So, you know, I think 